What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to be looking at an ESO Explained video and it's going to be covering how you can get rare and valuable furnishing items uh, through a wide variety of different methods. But before we jump into that, uh, just as a quick reminder to everyone that we are still doing the April giveaway. All you have to do to enter is leave a comment on any video of your choosing. Uh, you can leave as many comments as you want, ideally though hopefully ones that um, aren't spam, you know, have a, have a purpose to the comments. They can be productive, insightful, meticulous, help another person, you know, whatever, uh, whatever your preference is. But uh, that's my kind of way to give back. Uh, my AdSense is to give then one of you guys randomly for the month of April, um, you know, part of my ad revenue so that you can use it on ESO Plus stuff, or you can use it to buy crowns or whatever, hopefully not drugs. But today we are going to be looking at how you can get rare furnishings in ESO. So I wanted to kind of bring this discussion around because a lot of people don't seem to know the different ways that you can get furniture. And um, I'm someone who's decorated my house with quite a bit of things. Um, specifically, I mean, I mean, guys, look at this. You can literally become a monkey. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, is this not the kind of content that you're here for? And I'll tell you what you can do with this too that's even better. So once I go back to being a human, I'll show you something even more spectacular. So you can lightning form and then use the fan. And now you're a lightning monkey. I mean, this this is really the pinnacle of ESO right here. You're, you're literally a speed lightning monkey because of a furniture item. Now that specific furniture item actually drops from Somerset. Uh, you will have to do the um, uh, pick up all the relics of Somerset to get this item, and then you'll get the furniture fan of the false face. So let's start talking about furniture, 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 and different ways that you can get it. Now, some of these items all come from a wide array of places. So let's talk about the most common ways that you can get them. Some of them just straight up drop from plans that you can then craft at crafting stations. Those are probably the easiest. You probably have thought of that, and that's where it becomes super, super easy. But then you have others, such as this um, sunbird feather, and I think that might be the only one in here that drops from doing actual scrying. And then you've got things like this decorative sky shard. That actually drops from an achievement. These are actually books that you can get. Um, in your days and time in Cyrodiil. And we are going to go start looking at some of the furnishing vendors that you guys may not know about. So every single zone in ESO has a furnishing vendor. And it will be marked by, at the bottom here, you'll see the Home Goods and Achievement Furniture uh, vendor. We are going to go into Wayrest to go look at this. Every single zone will have this. However, the good part about Wayrest is it also has the Global Achievement vendor. But we are going to go look at a couple different zones. That way I can show you guys that there are a bunch of different things that you can do to get some cool furnishing items. Because I think that a lot of people don't know about these types of things. And all of the... So there's a grand list that ESO has made. And I am going... That a web page has put. And I'm going to put that in the comments below. So here you have the holiday furnishing vendor. Now this furnishing vendor is not in every single one. This is all stuff that's tied to specific achievements. This is Mid-Year Mayhem stuff. Um, this is the New Life Festival that I haven't done, the Mid-Year Mayhem Punch Bowl, um, you know, different stuff like that. And then you have your achievement furniture for this area. So this is stuff that's specific to Wayrest. So I think this, I think this one, you, it'll tell you if you don't have it for, unfortunately I actually have all of these here. I think for this one, you had to do the Azura Abbey quests, and then this one, you had to do a certain amount of uh, quests as well. Most of these are tied to specific quests, and then you also have the home good furnitures. Now, that these guys will sell is generally just like items that you kind of see in the overworld specific to that zone. Usually, you're not going to find anything like crazy there. It's just generally going to be your cookie cutter like trees, bricks you know, plants and stuff. So nothing like too insane will be in that last home good vendor, but it's still cool to try. So now we're gonna go to a different zone just so you guys can see 
some of the differences and we're going to go to a dlc zone now a lot of the dlc zones have really good stuff as well i'm not familiar with where the vendor is off the top of my head and i am not seeing it it's probably to be in the city it is not there Oh, here it is. So you can see how you look, and it's never in the exact same place, but you can see Markov, Merchantile, you'll see Achievement Vendor, Home Goods Vendor. Another thing, too, that we'll also be discussing is, is the Cold Harbor Vendor that appears every Friday night through Monday early morning. They will drop an ex So similar to the Golden Vendor in Cyrodiil, they also drop... A wide array of loot that generally you can't find any other time of the year now some people will purchase it because it's that's actually resellable these items that we're getting right here are not resellable which means that once you get this you know you can't give it to anyone else like this is yours the, the other person would have to come do it so you can see that there's some other stuff that's like specific to this zone versus other ones um, if you needed like you know, different types of logs and, and different things. Generally, the home goods vendors are much cheaper. And over here, you will find the achievement vendor. So he's got achievements that are specific to this zone. This one I don't have. But if I wanted to go out and do the uh, achievement reach cave dweller, I would then be able to purchase this item. Uh, you can see that this is actually very beautiful. If I took up, if I completed the mission or the achievement taking up the mantle, I would be able to purchase that, and then here I need the Gloom Reach Explorer to purchase. But you can see that there's tons of items. Every single zone has this, all of them. And I think that's what makes this so special, is, is that a lot of people don't know that you can go zone to zone, and you can look for these rare items, and you see, even look. There's one over here in the tiny, tiny little cluster island. There's still this type of stuff. So really there's going to be a couple main ways that you can get rare furniture. And that's the first one, you either purchase it from another person who is crafting it or has purchased it from the Cold Harbor vendor and is reselling it. And then the second method would be to actually go and do these achievements and then actually unlock these achievement furnishings. Uh, you can see that obviously the zones that are generally smaller usually have less stuff. But, you know, it's, it's still cool. Like, if you need clothing lines, like, it's more piratey type stuff here. You know, your cargo and, and whatnot. Usually, that also kind of fits with the theme of, like, the zone, obviously. Like, when you go to, like, elsewhere, you get, like, elsewhere type stuff and whatnot. Then the next method is going to be to go to Cold Harbor uh, every Friday night. It's unfortunately not there yet. As of the time of recording right now, it's 5.33 p.m. on the eastern coast. But if you were to go down to here, and the achievement vendor will be over here, and you will be able to talk to him, and he will give you a, a wide array of different items that you can purchase. And then the last one is scrying, and I will link in the comments below a good guide to go see for scrying, because I always think that guides like that are really helpful, because it can be a like, oh, you know, I'll go grind this out, and then... You know, get this nice thing. Uh, for example, the Stormhaven uh, White Gold Tower Light, which you've seen in my house, gives you a ton of light. All you need to do to unlock that scry is un is uh, pick up rune stones and or Sigic portals. I have like nine of them in my house. I absolutely love them. They're amazing. Uh, and you can see that there's another home good achievement furniture over here. And wham, bam, you can see all of the different things that I could buy from him. And then this is the stuff that's specific to doing Glenumbra stuff and things. And see, look, you know, there's cool statues. I believe every starter zone has a statue like this. But again, too, you can see in the, in the top middle here, it says bind on pickup. These are untradeable kind of going forward, which is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Because I think that it's important for you to like, you know, get your own achievements. Also, a lot of people don't know this too, but the Undaunted also have their own. I might as well just walk to the race shrine. Sorry, I was gonna save the thousand gold on this video so I don't don't go broke. I've been trying to like finish the lore books, which is a reminder to do your daily quests. 
because uh, I've been trying to, to complete the entirety of the uh, the lore sticker books, and it is expensive. But every Undaunted camp, so you'll have that in your main capital region, will also have its own achievement vendor, which means you can also run on over, talk to them. Now, this, is, I think, is actually where a lot of the coolier stuff drops from, and I'll show you why here in just one moment. Again, it's still a furnishing vendor, so it's not doing anything groundbreaking. Uh, but I always think that this... Oh, that's a stolen item. But you can see stuff like that. This is all tied to different dungeon achievements. And I think this stuff is just absolutely awesome to look at. Um, you got the new Eerie Lantern that just dropped. And this stuff I think is just absolutely cool. And everything here, you could probably guess like what thing is tied to which thing. Um, but if you didn't have it already, it would say like, hey, you have to go do this. Like, look at this one specifically. You can use this to light your house, and you can change the actual different light that it, it portrays. And then you'll see I actually have not completed Red Petal Bastion, which I don't know what difficulty this requires. Probably, honestly, probably normal. I've just not done it yet. But you see this beautiful tree, and this tree actually mu moves. <laughs> Muse. So when it says behavior animated, that means it actually moves around. Um, even ever so slightly. Uh, this is actually the for the achievement. This one's on me. This is where you go and you buy beer for everybody. And, and then you get this little item here. Uh, you can see though that there's like, you know, the movable vines and whatnot. I think this stuff is absolutely awesome. And this could be a great way to decorate your guys' houses. And the final thing that I wanted to show you that there are some items that are locked to specifically the crown store. And specifically to purchasing straight with crowns. Now why I think that this is just important to kind of cover. Is, is that you can still buy gold. Or you can still buy crowns from other players. And have them gift you these items. So for example on Xbox people will list up a transmute station for like 1 to 2 mil. Right. But then you can actually purchase a um, transmute station for significantly less. Let me see if I can find it. You can also see too, this place also has like different um, versions of things. So you have like your Halgrave and Alchemy Station. This is only 4,500 crowns. If you consider that the ratio is 100 to 1, that's 450,000 gold versus 1 to 2 million gold. And you can see if I press it on the right thumbstick, I can gift this to a person. So for the services tab, I think this could be really helpful for some of those items. Now, obviously, you can go buy, especially on Xbox, you can buy like a generic blacksmithing station for like 30K. So it's definitely not worth buying any of this fancy stuff except like the transmute stations. You know, those things that have like actual value. Also, it could be a good place to get those Mundus stones. Um, and then if you're into music, now some music does drop from Scry's, just a little 411. If you guys go and check out the links in the comments below, you can buy music boxes and you can also get them with scrying. Now, obviously they're not super expensive, but you know, just as an option for you, I got you guys to know all the different things that are available. A lot of these items though are generally like you guys probably recognize these items because you can generally either make these with a BP or you can purchase them from the Cold Harbor vendor or, you know, you can get it in some other fashion. Uh, so don't be fooled. Don't think that everything in here is exclusive. About 99% of it, except for that services tab, is not exclusive. Also, Cyrodiil has its own um, vendors, and that's where I got these trebuchets. No, this isn't a trebuchet. This is a ballista. Sorry, I just enraged some sort of medieval um, arms mechanic person guy enthusiast that's sort of I was looking for I knew if I said enough words I'd get there then you can also get things like and I'll show you here too what you get with AP you can actually get Volandrone if you have the achievement for it and then you can put this in your house also so if you're ever wondering like man how do people get such all this cool furnishings I can't afford to like go to, to Mornhold and buy all of it uh, well the trick is and this, these are those lights I was telling you guys about by the way crazy amount of light you get that from that scry I was saying uh, these are actually from Cold Harbor, though. You cannot buy these statues unless it's being sold by a player or the vendor currently has them open. But this was my whole point of this video is to show you guys, like, hey, 
there's a lot of places you can go and you can get these items. Like you can get a lot of furnishings from a lot of different places. It's not just like a, oh, I have to go to Mournhold or buy it from the Crown Store. There's a lot of places. We went to what three zones? There's there's achievement furnishings in Blackwood. There's achievement furnishings in Northern Elsewhere. Varden fell. You know this tiny little island over here. It's over in Kynes Roost. It is everywhere. And if you have a specific theme, I would suggest trying to go. Like if you're into like a vampire theme, I guarantee you Rivenspire and Western Skyrim will fit that vampire theme just based on the the zone stories there. You know, if you need deserty type stuff, you go to a little bit of a deserty type place. So that could be a good starting point. Or just go check them all out. I would check them out with you, but you guys would kill me because that would take probably like an hour. <laughs> and then if you're wondering, you can always go to your achievements. So if it says like you have to get such and such achievement, generally what I do is I just Google it because they don't actually put these things in like the best area. But say it would require me to have like so. For example, it may require me to explore a specific delve. This would be that achievement. I would generally just recommend Googling it, like just say what that achievement is, um, because that's generally easier. Another easy way too could potentially be is it might be what's tied to like up here. So for example, it could be you get this, if you get the Oblivion obliterate, <laughs> Obliterator uh, achievement, and you could see that I would need to then kill these two things. So a lot of times there are things tied to these top four up here, but that's not guaranteed. So just keep an eye out for what it's actually like telling you have to do, do achievement wise, but a simple Google search will do that. And again, I will put in the comments below a actual web page that will have every single furnishing item on in all of ESO and how you can get it specifically. But this is a good way for you guys to like go into the actual game itself and just start perusing around. But that's going to wrap up today's video. Sorry, that was a little bit more rambling. My head has been a little scattered today, as you could probably tell. So thank you guys for sticking around to the end. If you have questions, comments, concerns, leave it in the comment below. I did not mention what the question of the day is, but it will obviously be on the video. And the question of the day is, what is your least favorite skill line to level up? It could be a weapon. It could be a guild. Uh, for me, it's going to be the Mages Guild. I know the Sigic Order is also kind of a bitch, but for me, it's going to be the Mages Guild. Uh, for, it could be the Soul line, if you guys wanted to say that. Ledger Mint is actually probably also pretty high up there for me, but let me know what your guys' thoughts are. What is the worst skill line in the SO to level up? And I will catch you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys. You better remember to like and subscribe to Jake Clips. Or you should. I might have to pluck your eyes if you don't. Or... Better yet, I'll skip rope with your entrails. Do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. Off with you.